Now the only other thing that we need to uh, do, to, well two more things, uh, present values of mixed streams. Say you have uh, cash flows of $100 the first year, $200 the next two years, and $400 the third year. And we're going to place those, uh, or we have an investment that will earn or our required rate of return is 10%, and we want to know the present value of those. Now for mixed streams, present values of mixed streams, we do not use the five time value of money buttons. We use a button above the interest rate button, the CF or cash flow button. So we hit CF and it shows CF zero. So what, how much do we have now to put in the account or how much are we going to pay? We will use this later on uh, when we calculate NPV and IRR uh, but uh, for projects but we're not going to use it right now so we will leave it zero and the buttons we're going to use we're going to use enter the and the down arrow to enter in our numbers the BA2 plus works similarly to a spreadsheet and that as you put in the numbers in the cells you can toggle back and see what you've entered so our first cash flow we said was a hundred dollars so we hit a hundred and then enter and then the down button now F01 means frequency. The first, how many times does the cash flow occur in a row? Okay. Now on this example, we had 100 the first year, $200 for years two and three, and $400 for year four. So the $100 only happens once, so we just leave that at one, arrow down to cash flow two, or CO2. Now again, this one, it was $200, so we're gonna have $200 for years two and three. So we hit 200, enter, hit the down arrow, and then frequency, since that 200 happens two years in a row, we hit two, enter. And so that takes care of uh, cash flows for year two and three. Then we hit down arrow again, and enter our last cash flow of 400, enter, and there we've got all our cash flows. We can toggle back up hit by hitting the up arrow to see we don't have anything in the first one. Again, we will leave that zero until we get to a later chapter. $100 for the first cash flow, and that happens once. $200 for the next cash flow, and that happens twice. And then $400 for the last cash flow, and that happens once. And if you keep going down, you'll see the other cash flows are zero. Now, to calculate the present value, we're going to use the NPV button, meaning net present value. You hit NPV and it says I equals. That's the interest rate that is used to uh, compound these cash flows or discount these cash flows. So we'll say that was 10%. So 10, enter. And then we hit the down arrow and it says NPV equals. All right. And then we hit compute and it says the present value of that stream of cash flows is 679.67. Now, to calculate the future value of a mixed stream, you have to do it one at a time. All right. So I will not display that now. It's just basically, if we had that $100, $200 for two years, and $400, we'd have to calculate each one individually to some time point in the future and then add them up. Okay. The only other thing I need to show you is, say, if we're doing um, semi-annual compounding or quarterly compounding. In that case... Uh, instead of changing the periods per year, I would suggest uh, just changing the number of periods in the interest rate. So we've got $100 we're going to put in for two years at 10% interest. Then we were going to, but it's compounded semi-annually, we're going to increase or dump the number of periods by two and divide the interest rate by two. All right, so instead of, so if it's in there for two years, instead of two, we're going to put four because it's semi-annual compounding. So we put four in. The interest rate was 10% annually, and note that interest rates are always quoted in annual rates. But since it's semi-annual compounding, we're going to take 10% divided by two, or five, would be our interest rate. 100 is our present value. Again, we have zero payment. And then we're going to compute future value, 
to get an answer of 121.55. Now just a couple more things to show you. On when you're if on the cash flow button uh, for the cash uh, mixed stream present value for example, in order to get rid of what you have entered in there, you have to hit the second clear button which says clear work while you're in the cash flow. So first you have to hit cash flow, second clear work, and then after you do that you can see everything is back to zero. Okay. One more thing with compounding that I almost forgot to mention was continuous compounding. Uh, say for example we are uh, put money in an account uh, that compounds continuously which is every microsecond. What we have to do instead of using the time value of money buttons is we have to use uh, a button uh, LN, which actually second LN, see above that is E to the X. E is the base of the natural logarithm. And so in order to, to do continuous compounding, uh, say we want $100 in an account uh, for two years continuously compounded at 7%. All right, first thing you have to do is convert the 7% to a decimal. So you take 0 0.07, multiply it by the number of years, in this case 2. So times 2 equals 0.14. And then you hit second, and then e to the x, and it gives 1.1503. That is your future value interest factor. Uh, that you then multiply, so times the deposit, $100, so you can see your uh, money, your $100 uh, in two years at 7% compounded continuously has grown to 115.03 uh, rounding. Now say if you just wanted an effective rate, an effective rate uh, at continuously compounding uh, say 7%, what's the, that's the nominal rate, what's the effective rate if you compound continuously? Just hit 0 .07 second e to the x and it gives you 1.0725. So we subtract 1, so the effective rate is 7.25%, 0 0.0725. So continuously compounded, uh, that's what the effective rate would be.